Hello everyone, how are you? I hope everybody's doing well. This is yours truly, Triple G, coming at you once again. Today, I teased in the last video I did with the Ibanez RGA IX6 video. If you haven't checked it out, check it out right here. So in that video, I played, um, I demoed it with a uh, little bit of Arch Enemy riff and um, then I showed you this guitar just briefly. So uh, let's take a look at it real quick before I, um, we get started, right? So uh, starting with the headstock, got the uh, pitchfork uh, split, whatever that is called. Um, the paint theme is carried out right onto the headstock, which is very nice. You got your uh, rosewood fretboard with the um, inlay specific inlay design you got your set neck construction in the back all painted grover tuners and you got your tyrant battle axe paint theme with the blood splashed everywhere and uh you got your uh v design that is um that is slightly different than your traditional v you know, I, I, I kind of like the slightly different variations of the V designs, like the uh, Demolition V that I have from Jackson and Corey's uh, Dean V while he was with Dean Guitars. So those are all, I kind of like those a lot and just um, nothing special on the back. It's just all dark black with the uh, string through the body design. So sustain is actually real killer. And the neck profile is very round. It's very uh, reminiscent of a uh, Gibson-esque. So there you go. All right. So with that, we'll take a listen to uh, what the guitar sounds like. Okay, so we are back. I hope I didn't uh, gross anybody out with my uh, playing. So with that, so the guitar is made in China. So it's a uh, street price is $499. You could find it actually still brand new for slightly north of $400 then closer to $500. I think that's where the sweet spot is. Not sure if a China guitars could command 500. However, let's say you had to pay for uh, 500 for it. I don't think it's a bad guitar. Um, it actually is pretty well put together. So if you remember the again aforementioned Ibanez RGA IX6 guitar, which I reviewed the last time, which I talked about last time. You know, one of my biggest gripes was with the fret wires hanging out so far out where, you know, when you go up and down the neck, it, could, it, it bothered me enough, right? So you don't have that kind of issue with this guitar. The fret uh, wires are done really well. It's really, really well put together. And you got some quality components like the Grover tuners. The pickups are, however, now, I, I, forgot to show you earlier so if you look at that that's a DMT Amat Amat I don't know how to pronounce his name Michael Amat um, signature tyrant 
humbucking pickup in the bridge. You have the little DMT logo there. And then this is a um, just a DMT design pickup. So it's the budget version of the pickup. It's not a signature pickup or anything like that. However, I actually prefer the neck pickup on this guitar a lot more than I like the bridge pickup. The bridge pickup has plenty of bite, plenty of attack, all is good. But I think the, bridge, the neck pickup is sweet, it's round, and it seems nice to me. The guitar does not have a tone knob, so you are a little bit limited in terms of versatility. But, you know, with the blood everywhere type of guitar, you're not really, I guess, turning down the tone knob for anything sweet or singing kind of thing. I, I don't know. I would have liked the tone knob there, but you know, that's just me. And then you got your three-way toggle. Um, out of the box, the um, bridge was set up a little bit high and I actually have it a little bit still high uh, against my personal liking. Cause uh, when I have thicker strings on here, I, I don't want the string buzzing cause the string hitting the fretboard and you know, stuff like that. So on to that subject I want to talk to you about. So if I sidetrack a little bit, there has been a lot of noise with, you know, Gibson's quality going down. And one of the big thing um, that supported that story was how Bill Callagher of Mastodon leaving Gibson. And one of the things that he uh, talked about was, you know, quality control, artist relations, you know, all that not working out very well while he was with Gibson. And one of the things that he mentioned was, you know, his signature guitar, you know, should have his string gauges and stuff like that, right? But, you know, Gibson was putting the guitar out uh, with a standard um, gauge, you know, stuff, you know, things like that, that really bothered Bill. Now, if you... Follow Arch Enemy, Michael Amat, Amat, Michael Amat, whatever. Um, they are all tuning down. I mean, they're full two, two tones down. Uh, so this is like a, what is it, drop C. Um, so you're going to have to go with thicker strings, whether that's 11 through 54, 11 through 56, 12 through 59, whatever. So with that, what you're going to end up dealing with is the nut. And unfortunately, the nut is cut um, to support just 1046, basically. Of course, you could do 942. But um, because of that, I had to bust out the filing, um, the, the nut filing tool. And I had to throw down some, um, the big band the nut sauce. Yeah, I said it. Um, so trying to support the uh, thicker strings that I'm going to have here. But... Now, if you remember when I talked about my Ibanez guitar, I prefer how the strings would go straight up through like this. So that's why I love the Ibanez headstock. Now, look at the extreme angle on the third and the fourth string here where they're bending so extreme right at the nut. So even when I worked on the um, nut, enlarging the groove to support the string, it creates a problem with the tuning stability. So my typical third string, which would be your G string normally, that is constantly going out of tune. So while I was cutting my little audio portion of this demo, when I was riffing, I had to actually take multiple takes just to get it into you know reasonable tuning range. I think Final Outcome still had that string a little bit out of tune, but you know, I wasn't gonna take 25 different takes. So that's just, you know, what it is. So that's one of the problems. That's not because it's a China guitar. It's just because it's a design of the guitar with the headstock, the angle and everything. That's where the fault lies. So that's not, you know, that's not a fault of the guitar being Chinese made. Now, the second problem that I have, another inherent design flaw of the guitar is you got your strap button right here, then you got your input jack right here. I'll tell you why that is very unfortunate. If you have a Gibson Flying V, your input jack is gonna go through the front of the guitar. Now, some of the newer generation V guitars I've seen, input jacks being right here on the uh, wing edge or even on the backside. This thing, having the input right here, becomes a, it creates a huge problem because 
Now, if I, I normally play with my Linesys G10, so that's my wireless adapter. So if I shove that in there, if I was standing up and playing, that's no problem. However, you know, with the gi, you know how you can't sit down and play like this. So you have to kind of straddle, straddle the guitar between your thighs. Well, with that adapter there, it's getting in my thigh and actually that could actually snap that adapter in half if I'm not careful. Okay, so you say, well, what do, you should just use a cable. So if you use a cable like this, that's a straight, so what that's going to do is, again, it's going to stick out and you're not able to really straddle it um, while sitting down. So you are forced to use a cable like this that has the L plug. Again, yes, I know, it's a V guitar. It's not meant to be played sitting down. It's a stage guitar. You stand up and you rock your balls off and that's what that is for. So how big of a problem that really is? That's a debatable. However, it is a problem to me. So that's uh, something that I will share with you. Other than that, other than that, for its price, for impeccable paint job um, that they did here, um, the clear coat is nice and even, doesn't look to be too thick. The whole um, you know, decal that's underneath that supports this, this uh, paint theme that they have here is extremely well done and it's just really solidly put together in my opinion and so basically if you're looking for a I mean if you want a v-shaped guitar and you're on a somewhat of a limited budget or you know five about 500 four to five hundred is a sweet uh, spot for you you know, this is going to be a real nice guitar. You know, as far as the pickups are concerned, you know, those could be swapped out. So if these are not your, these don't tickle your balls, then you could get, you know, something else, you know, later on down the road. Um, again, the tone, lack of the tone knob is a bit of a problem for me. But again, with the guitar that looks like this, it's 100% metal all the time. So maybe it's not a problem for you. Again, it all comes down to personal preference. So that's what this guitar is about. I'm sorry about the um, the overall darkness of this particular episode because I'm shooting this in the uh, middle of the night. So um, there you go. What else can I talk about this guitar? Really, you know, not that much. The quality of the rosewood on the fretboard, I think, could have been better. I see some um, the the wood grain where there's some gap and then um, like towards right here right on the higher upper fret area the uh, rosewood is not as good looking as like right right here and it's pretty light if you ask me but other than that i mean for 420 or whatever it is that i paid it's really not bad it's a really good guitar i really enjoy playing this guitar um it sounds good to me um I have a you know problem dialing in tone um, for recording sessions because uh, I'm horrible at miking the cabinet as and so I try to use um, sometimes I use modelers and whatnot but you know with that you, you have the whole digital fizziness and you know so on and so forth so I'm horrible at tone dialing in however when dialed in correctly with the uh, good tube amp the, the guitar sounds absolutely phenomenal so my, if you could deal with the, some of the issues that I've gone over, if those don't bother you, great guitar. So that's it for this episode. Until next time, I've been Triple G. You've been awesome. Take care.